Open in Spirit Vine Center in Brazil. We just finished the April 19 retreat. What was the most uh, important lesson for you during the workshops? Having to actually face your your reality, you know, what what really is driving your issues, you know, and then having someone like you that challenges you and and forces you to to um to do that is is pretty amazing. So because you're relentless, but in a good way. So. So what did you learn? Oh, what did I learn? Um, yeah, to sort of still learning to to confront my issues. What I really liked about all the workshops was the guided meditation through them. That that was really amazing. I had no. I had no understanding of what was going to happen during the workshops, um, and I kind of thought the workshops were going to be more like lectures, and and um, and I was very interested in the workshops because of that, but they they were nothing like lectures, and they were really really interesting. And the guided meditations, I've never been so much like in deep, like I don't know, like a kind of like a trance, um, where I'm really just focused on myself and. I really, I really enjoyed all the workshops. Uh, why the Spirit Blissman was your favorite? Well, it, it really it took me to, it revealed something that I had never thought about with, uh, with my physical pain and um, um, emotional pain associated with physical pain. Um, and it taught me a tool to use during all the ceremonies, which I thought was really awesome, the, the vacuum. And I used I used it in I think all of the ceremonies, and I and I know I can use it again now, in the future. So, did you have any idea before this retreat about the spirit releasement? No technique, nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. And now, what do you think about that? I think it's awesome. I think it's very helpful. It really, like, any time something was revealed to me as a, an emotional trauma or something that you know, has taken a part of me and I've kept inside of me. Now I can just let go. It's just a, it's a really nice thing. That I don't know what would have happened had I not known the technique. I would have just been like, okay, I know I need to let these go, but I, but I don't think I would have focused on letting it go the way I did. And, and I feel much, it, it felt freeing. It was really... So basically you use your awareness to realize what this pain or this tension is inside of you yes. and what is the meaning and the purpose of this and if you are ready to get rid of this. Yes, and every single time I was like, oh, I'm so ready to get rid of this and I know exactly how to do it, done. Goodbye. <laughs> and you, Yuraimi? So I think for me, um, the workshops were so important because they helped me realize how much power I actually have. And I can say that I came into this, the entire experience of being at Spirit Vine feeling like I had to master something through something else, not through myself. Um, or I had to call for help from some other source and not for myself. And I think through the workshops, um, particularly the inner child workshop um, and the shadow, the, the shadow workshop, I think I realized that I have the power and it really helped me guide the experience through ayahuasca. It was my first time taking ayahuasca. Um, I didn't know that it, well for me, I, I felt it was going to take me out of control, out of my own control. I wasn't going to have control. Ayahuasca was going to lead the journey. But through your workshops and through the inner child and the, and the shadow self, which really helped me a lot, I realized no, I, I manage all of this. Ayahuasca is a helpful tool, um, but the techniques that, you know, that we align with, particularly an inner child, I don't think I've ever paid attention to my inner child as much as I have here. I don't think I really ever thought about certain things that may have been traumatic to, it, to myself as a child. Um, I always think, oh, no, I got over that. Um, but when I do dove deeper, I realized there were some areas that I needed to work out and the techniques um, really helped me guide the experience. I wasn't out of control with ayahuasca. I was super in control. It's um, not the, I think it's not control, the word. It's a, you are conscious. You yes, know super conscious. That you yes. drive <laughs> ayahuasca, you know where you are, you know I want to go to the bathroom or not. Mm -hmm. So 
it's not controlled because we need to let go mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and allow ayahuasca to guide us. Yes, and the word is I, I confidently surrendered. Yeah. So I had the confidence within myself to know that I could get through the experience, so I surrendered. Um, and I surrendered multiple times, which is a big deal for me because <laughs> I'm very, uh, in the past I have been uh, someone who seeks control quite a bit. And I, I feel like I, I can move confidently into surrendering into different areas of my life now. Yeah. And also when we think about our childhood, most of the people believe that it's something that is in the past. Okay, yes, I, have, I had problems, but I move on. And it's not completely true because we have our inner child with all the wounds inside of us. Yeah, I feel like um, I knew childhood traumas created a lot of the problems I have today, but I really didn't understand them. I didn't understand what patterns of behavior it caused until the workshops and until ayahuasca. So it's, it's so common that a lot of people, they were waiting the whole life to understand what is going on, that all the wounds we had in the childhood are affecting us today. And we think that we are free and we do what we want, but as a matter of fact, we are sometimes just reacting or overreacting to certain triggers that take us there again. I think, mm -hmm. that's, um, I think that's apparent in everyday life when you feel scared for whatever reason or you go through some something stressful in everyday life you kind of feel like a child again and you 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 automatically regress to being a child and so that was uh, important for you this workshop yeah and what yeah. did you do during the workshop to resolve the situation? actually the workshop was really useful because um i think i was the first one where you encouraged everybody to help me which felt really good so rather than just you and me, it was everybody in the group participate together to help me. Yeah, when somebody in the group cannot do the exercise because they didn't understand the technique or, or because they are very blocked, then we do it all together. All the visualization is for the, from the group to that person and it's very powerful and you can feel it you see the results immediately. It also felt really good to just to have everybody else's support mm -hmm. because quite often you feel like you're on your own in the world and suddenly felt like I had a lot of friends. So. Any, any of you was a skeptic about these techniques before? I was definitely, yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm fairly open-minded but I'm very, I'm very scientific in my approach to everything and yeah, if someone would have told me a year ago about this, I would have just ignored it and brushed it off. But because I knew someone who'd been here anyway, and that I had some insight, I did up my own little bit of research. I I was more open-minded, but that was fifty-fifty. So I came here to see. So it was a good surprise for you. Very much, yeah. Far ex exceeded. Well, especially my if with our own method, we cannot resolve a problem. We need to open to another type of solutions. Yeah, that's true. For me, it was also the inner child. I think I I came here because I I well I wanted to I wanted to connect with my soul. And aside from that, I I I thought I had a lot of childhood trauma, which obviously I did, and I tried to work it in other manners during the years. But this. Uh, adopting of the child, of taking care of your inner child. I've never known about that technique and I've heard about uh, inner child workshops and I was I was never like ready to form part of it. I didn't understand it, just the concept of it. I never went into detail but I, it sounded like that's nothing I want to do and this has really helped. So I think when I go back home, when I go back home, I'm definitely going to enroll in this and see where I can go with this because it's very useful and it was very useful for me here and I think I need to keep on working with it. The, yeah. I think the difference is because you are doing it in a very light trance, the okay. visualization, because if you are in a regular state of mind, you have a lot of filters 
and limitations and you think too much so you are blocking yeah. but when you are relaxed you have less filters so the information comes yeah. and the group energy is very powerful and the setting the setting and i propose this okay take it as a, we are playing right. let's let's go with this if mm -hmm. you want to criticize do it tomorrow Right. And then you realize, wow, this is powerful. But I've been going to therapy for two years and I've got nothing out of it. Partly because I control the session, I think. Um, if here, you don't really get to control it. I mean, so, and, and I feel that even in this course of, what, nine days, I mean, even I didn't make as big a dent as I'd like to, but I definitely saw more within this nine days than I have in two years. So. Why? What is the difference? Um, because you, you push, you, um, <laughs> there's, like I said in the beginning, it's kind of like you're very forceful for a reason because you have a short period of time to be able to reach a group of people. And, um, and so you have to, as soon as they say something, you target in. I mean, you're able to cipher through the bullshit and then target in exactly what it is. You already kind of already have a sense or second sense of what the issue is. So you know how to ask the right question and you don't let go. And you force them to be, you know, to to face that and not give them an excuse to, you, you kind of help direct them yeah. um, in a very positive but um, strong way. So. I, I don't like to tell people what I am feeling because I think it's the people who have to reach the, the knowledge. If I give mm -hmm. it to you, That's it right. will not be the same oh, yes. because you, you said, no, I don't yeah. believe that. So I need to ask the right questions and for you to arrive there. That's right. Yeah, and you really ask good questions, mm -hmm. I, and I had no expectation of that. I, we all shared our experiences after each workshop and after each ceremony, and you, you always ask questions that are really interesting and helpful. You um. need to learn how to listen and remove it from the context, because if you are very trapped in the context that is happening, you, you are attached to that and you, sometimes people are talking about another period another moment of your life so i asked the question and i said okay remove it from the context and the information comes like this but also it's the body language it's more complex yeah. i appreciate um your focus on language because um i think we had a one-on-one -on -one session which i really appreciated and um, you told me something that I said that I did not notice. Like, look, you said this word, why this word? Out of all the words that I know, why this word? And I never really thought about those things. So I think, you know, I think you taught me to be more mindful about what I say, because what I say is a big clue as to where the issue lies, the root cause of certain things. And I think that that's power, listening to yourself. Yeah. which I don't really do. <laughs> but we all need to learn yeah. to listen and to pay attention because people are saying everything. But even the person talking don't realize. They are saying and they don't listen what they are saying. Mm -hmm. So, and then some people were very worried before coming here about security issues. So for me, um, traveling alone and this far from home and not knowing the country and not knowing the language I was a bit you know afraid but after doing my research and um, for four years <laughs> I decided this was the safest place to come and definitely it is I feel very safe and once I got here I just felt very safe and very comfortable with the whole group um, and Sylvia and Theo and it just felt like family and I feel really good I'm ready to go back. Yeah, this, <laughs> yeah this, this was my first uh, time in South America, so I, I decided to come with my friend because um, we both wanted to do it. Um, and I researched a lot of different retreat centers, and um, this one just seemed like the best, the, the safest, and the most valuable center. Um, and, and it is, and it's very, uh, Sylvia is really good at answering any questions <laughs> <laughs> that I had uh, before coming, and it sounds like she answered a bunch of questions from everybody here before coming, and she's very fast with her responses, which is nice. Um, so I had all my worries taken away before I arrived. Yeah, the most important is uh, before you drink ayahuasca, is to feel safe. 
that you can let go and that you trust in the people who will facilitate the ceremony. Well, that, that's one of the things I trusted most was who you are and who Tio is. And, um, you know, I, I knew I could feel safe with you. Uh, any of you had uh, <coughs> depression issues before? Anne? Yes. Uh, so my depression causes uh, a lot of self-loathing and just just complete, you know, just like, just, mm, just in there. And so my... my my third ceremony, um, like I didn't feel like, I, I really enjoyed my first two ceremonies, um, but I didn't feel like I went very deep. And I, I had no understanding, no expectations of what ayahuasca was going to show me for my third ceremony or any of them. You know, it's just so interesting. And I felt like ayahuasca showed me what I needed to see. And I hadn't even asked for that, like, as my intention even though, you know, quietly I, I did. So, so when I was in my third ceremony and I was just enjoying, enjoying dancing with myself and hugging myself and I, it was just a deep, intense self-love and there was, you know, no hatred. There was nothing to hate and I knew there was nothing, there was no reason to do harm to myself, you know, to, to cause so much pain mm -hmm. to myself. Mm -hmm. And it was just incredible. It was just so enjoyable. And I was just smiling from ear to ear for like three hours, just enjoying myself. And so that was really incredible. And now I know that's something I'm going to have to work on every single day is, is keeping, you know, integrating that into my life. But now I have, I feel like a really good understanding of what self-love is. And yeah, it's really, was really powerful uh, journey that night. And anybody else issues with depression? Yeah, I've always been. Always. I would I would consider myself as quite. I I I cover it with a smiley face and a and a happy attitude, but I've been depressed for a long time, long long time. And what did you do to overcome the depression? Um. So I just with these two experiences, which are really good, I I came out just thinking well, that is me. That is that is the real me. There's, there's no need to be depressed and then it made me realize the things I was depressed about were so minor and they are things that I can conquer and I've got the tools now to go back and work with and coming out write everything down that you've seen they're they're real memories and you can use that as a reference point so if you ever when you reintegrate and you go back to your normal day you can refer back and, and it'll jolt a memory again and you'll just remember that the good things that you saw mm -hmm.